Hello and welcome to another episode of my F123 My Team Career Mode here today for part 3 for our first visit to Monaco We're going to start with qualifying and the most important qualifying of the season Maybe even more important as there is rain forecast for the race on Sunday So on our second run our first one was absolutely shocking We went 2 seconds faster and then going at on our final run before the end I thought we were going to catch Bottas but we got away with that into the final corner we found a couple of attempts 10th and a half and by the time we get to the line we will found two attempts and we'll start in P10 A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word. That's how Mr. Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but we still race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. There is no victory more coveted than that for the Monaco Grand Prix. We already see the lowest average speeds of the season here at the Circuit de Monaco, and they'll be even lower in the difficult conditions today. 19 corners make up this famous two-mile track, and with the rain, it'll be even harder than usual to get that critical heat into the tyres. So don't be surprised if we see a safety car at some point during the Grand Prix. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Leclerc, Norris, Bottas, Sainz, Brown, Gasly, Stroll, Fittipaldi, Ocon, Oscar Piastri, Joe, Sonoda, Albert, Sargent, De Vries, Hulkenberg, De Vries. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Anthony Davidson joins us in commentary for this one and the main focus is right in front of us. It's a wet race. How does that affect your planning as a driver? It is a touch damp, isn't it? Well, as a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these kind of conditions. Standing water, tyre temperature and visibility. Judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tyres kick up. So we are here on the grid then, a two stop is scheduled for today, two lots of intermediate tyres, it is meant to dry up towards the end of the race, so we'll see if that plays a factor later on into the Grand Prix, but for the start of it, it is very very wet, as we all form up on the grid, and we completely messed it up, but maybe a little bit further back could find us some more grip maybe, but as the five red lights come on and go out and we are racing here in Monaco and we've got an okay start, it's not the best but we're on the back of Bottas and the Ferrari Sainz we are going to send it up the inside of Sainz Sainz gets a bit sandwiched in the middle of us then is now everyone was flying up the hill me and Sainz side by side, this is Bottas's Sainz pushes us wide and Bottas sneaks back through up the inside of us. Now, as we head down towards Mirabeau, we're going to try and send it late up the inside of Valtteri Bottas. Squeeze him a bit, but he's still there Bottas, and now he has the inside line for the hairpin, and you can't get two cars around there. We have to back out of it. We tried our best to keep our foot in but Bottas stays ahead and we're back to where we started in this race and we've got the Aston Martin of Stroll behind us but as we skip all the way on to lap 14 and these intermediate tyres did not feel very good we were skating from Mirabeau to the tunnel all the way down the hill into the hairpin we had no grip whatsoever we were driving on ice and then we got to the point where it was time for the second round of the first round of stops but no one else was pitting so I wanted to hold off a little bit and you can see here lap 19 
the state of the rear tyres. We were losing about a second and a half just at the hairpin to Bottas. And we were gaining it back around most of it, around the other part of the lap. It was just the hairpin. We, we were literally skating all the way around it. But we're going to box now and go on to another set of the intermediate. The wet's normally today, it's nowhere near that wet. Okay, go, go, go. And I'll see if the pits we come now. And where will we come out as we come back onto the racetrack? Through goes Albon and also Hulkenberg as well. We're going to beat out De Vries in his Alpha Tauri. But these have still got to pit, so we need to get these quickly as physically possible. Stroll stayed out, so we may lose out if we don't get past these quick. But going down into the chicane, we get the job done on Nico Hulkenberg. Next up, Albon in the Williams as we go through to back and now through the best part of the racetrack through the quick swimming pool chicane. And now I've got a bit of a good exit. We're going to try and go to the outside, but Albon slams the door firmly shut there but he's going to pit and he's out of our way now this is Stroll exiting the pit now he's gone on to another set of the intermediates and we have flying past and we have gained so much time on Stroll partly down to the pit stops but also this car came alive on new intermediate tyres we were skating on the old inters, the new inters, we had so much grip, we were so quick, you can see that, we let stroll for dust, and we caught Bottas, this car went from a 2021 Haas to this season's Red Bull, we had so much confidence, so much grip, as we send it up the inside of Bottas, we caught him very quickly, we've got him now, and can we look further up the road? We had so much pace, I think we just pushed too hard too soon on those last set of inters, the first set of inters, and that cost us. But now these tyres feel unbelievable, so much grip. But on to lap 32, a handful of laps to go. Those at the back who have nothing to lose are going for dry tyres. And so did Mark. He told me it was time for the drives. I was holding off a little bit when it did stop raining. Because I didn't want to be the, the first one to blink if it wasn't the right option. With only a couple of laps to go, six to go. Bottas stayed out though. And we are going to put on the soft tyres. But there's an issue. There's an issue at the back. They can't get the left rear off. That intermediate tyre wanted to stay on, but they managed to get it off. Not a, not a boss ass situation like in 2021. So we're rounding the final corner here. Most of them on the inters of box now. And we are going to set the fastest lap of the race. And there is Bottas. We beat him out by a mile. But also, staying up that extra lap may have cost him because he has fallen right back. And is now only just ahead of Large Stroll. This is Carlos Sainz boxing. He stayed out the extra couple of laps. Laps 36. We round the first corner and we wasn't that far off beating the Spaniard out. And then we gain a lot of time. But I don't think we're going to have the pace to deal with him. This lap 37, one lap later, Ferrari doing Ferrari things. They have left Charles Leclerc out there on intermediate as you can see the train behind him as they go through the tunnel and he's just gonna go if this was any other track he would be absolutely mugged by now he's lost out to the williams and now may lose out to the alfatari up the inside he tried it to pack but he is gonna box his Charles Leclerc and that's going to lose him a lot of time out to the pits he comes now and we are only just going to be with him we go around the first corner we're side by side of Leclerc we are ahead of Charles Leclerc who would have thought that 
at the start of this race. And if how bad it was looking, we had no grip, we were sliding around this entire racetrack. And the car's just come alive since the first round of stops. This is George going on to the final lap. And what a Mercedes doing? They've boxed Lewis Hamilton. There's one lap to go, guys. What's he doing? It's a Mercedes one, too. They were being out hunted down by the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. But what are Mercedes doing there? Look how far back Hamilton has come. They've got, they've put him off the podium. What is going on with Mercedes in this career mode? This is it though. This is the further lead of the race in the final lap. Max Verstappen is going to try and go to the outside. Mercedes tried to keep George out on Inters to win this race, but Max Verstappen has denied them victory. As he goes round the outside at, Mir at Mirabeau. And now it's going to round the final corner to once again win the Monaco Grand Prix. Max Verstappen wins. George Russell will just hold on for P2. It looked like he may have done it if there were just one extra lap. Mercedes threw away. A potential 1-2 and a double podium. Perez finishes third. Hamilton fourth. And we are going to round the final corner to get our first points as Lamborghini racing and a great P7. Alright, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. It's the one that everybody wants to win, and they've only gone and done it. What a fantastic result here. And talk to me. What do you think it was that sealed the win for? I think a large part of the result comes down to temperament. They were able to keep their heads when everyone around them was losing theirs, and that's allowed them to get the best out of the car, to maximise the strategy, and to stay out of trouble. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. So that's been a your Monaco Grand Prix and a very much a race of two halves. You look at the first half of our race, it wasn't going very well. Pushed you too hard on those inters and it cost us. We had no pace, we were losing so much time to Bottas and we're just holding up those behind. But we pitted and the car came alive. It was like a totally new Formula 1 car. But Max has happened wins as you expect. Back to back wins for him in his career mode now leads the championship ahead of George Russell and Carlos Sainz. And we have moved all the way up to P10 in the Drivers' Championship as well, just ahead of Lance Stroll and just behind Pierre Gasly in his Alpine. In terms of the constructors, and we have moved all the way up to P7. We're no longer the best team who hasn't scored a point. We are now the seventh best team on the grid, and it's just us and Alfa Tauri who are still yet to get off the mark this season. I hope you enjoyed this video. What a race, a very entertaining Monaco Grand Prix for once. It all got very dramatic at the end, late chaos, a bit like the real life Monaco Grand Prix. I did think that the AI wouldn't have pitted because so many times when it's dried up and passed up one games they've never boxed but they did. We head to Spain next for the Spanish Grand Prix and I hope to see you there. Goodbye.